What's up ladies and gentlemen, this is Griever back here, bringing you guys the latest, not so much the behind the bar reviews, but behind the lawn reviews. And there's a good reason for this, it's because for all the Americans out there who have not grown up and got to the 21st century, this is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly, give or take a few degrees. And for all the regular people out there, it's, as you goddamn well know, very, very hot. It's about uh, anywhere from 35 to 41 calculated on everybody's decks. So, and I can honestly tell you, this is the hottest day I've experienced since my trip to Ottawa for Canada Day last year, which was uh, uh, 43 degrees Celsius. So, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be doing, I, I just could not stay behind the bar. I could not stay behind the bar for this review. It's too nice a day and I hummed and hawed and I even got off work early and I hummed and hawed about doing the review but I've been sitting out here all day and I thought to myself, you know what? I'm not going inside. I will go inside to edit this video later and the review will be late. It'll be later tonight because I'm not going inside, ladies and gentlemen. I got barbecuing to do. I got, well, I already did all the chores but as you can tell, what a nice cut lawn. But, suffice it to say, we're going to be talking about one Piece, One Piece, there we go, One Piece, One Piece, uh, chapter 948, and here's the deal, here's the deal, this review might be a little short, might be a little short, because, why are people hitting on One Piece right now? I don't understand, can you, the community, my comment section, can you explain to me exactly why this is not liked right now? Because we got interesting character design in this chapter. We got uh, dialogue and we got some like layered, you know, dialogue sort of idea in this chapter. And as I said in the last chapter review, that this thing is gonna fall all day. Um, every single uh, every single thing that I said in the last chapter review is true. People did not like Big Mom's amnesia, people did not like uh, Luffy taking on a Yonka for training, and people did not like Queen being taken down so easily. And all those things were fixed in the last chapter, yet people still dislike and are saying they're dropping One Piece. This arc is going to be looked back on as the most hated arc, yet it is going to be one of the best arcs by the time it's finished. At least I, I hold that belief. Because I have faith in Oda. And after 20 plus years of running a manga series, you would think that the fan base would have a little trust in him too. So, anyways, that being said, guys, uh, let's just move on to the chapter. Because the chapter itself was, I mean, it was a good chapter. We got, we got some good dialogue, we got some information, we finally saw Kawamatsu the Kappa, and, I mean, one thing that kind of made sense to me was at the start of the chapter we get Luffy and he's you know battling it out and he's like okay big mom you know big mom and queen aren't here but I can still you know practice my hockey against these foes you know and but at the end of the day that what does that do it doesn't do much because he still hasn't really fully learned it and then we get the uh, the prison warden the Udon prison warden basically saying ah prisoners go attack him there's no need to worry about straw hat Luffy taking over and they all jump on him and they're all like wait what's going on why like can't you escape like what's going on right and like I'm trying to help you people and it's brought up and this makes total sense to me is the fact of the matter is these people might not be samurai but remember you have to look deeper into Japanese culture you have to remember samurai shame is like guys just go watch the last samurai and you should know enough about it you suffer a defeat you cut off your head you you get your head cut off you you commit uh seppuku you you know you stab yourself and get you know you kill yourself in in so that you can withhold your honor these people even if they're only villagers even if they're not ronin or samurai or warriors of any kind they are still people of Wano, people of the uh, pseudo-Japanese culture built in one piece. They hold that honor, they hold that respect and that level of pride. And you cannot take that away from them. So when you look into it, 
and you see all the different things that go on, you need to understand that these people still hold that pride. Even in prison 20 years later, they still hold the pride of being one of citizens, of being of, the, of that people. And resisting at this point is almost blast, not blasphemy, but close to it. it. It's very hard to explain. It's very hard to understand as a as a non-Japanese person, as a person that is not from the fictional Wano. So I just, when I read into that, like some people were criticizing this decision, like why are the prisoners being like that? And I'm just looking at it as, I don't think you fully understand. Like these people believe that they should have committed seppuku borderline. And now it's like, we already suffered one defeat. Now you're asking us to suffer a second one. Like our honor and our pride won't allow us to even attempt the second one. The fact that we're alive is a bit of a, you know, uh, a, a thing among itself. So they explain all this, but then we hear the, the voice, the voice from the cell, the cell that should not be open. We hear the voice of Kawamatsu the Kappa and his laughter style or whatever he's doing here. I guess his laughter style or maybe he just like leads with that. He goes, Kappa, you know. And he says, you tell him, young straw hat, you know, keep fighting because these people need a, basically a swift kick in the ass. And all of this leads up to the fact that we do get the reveal of Kawamatsu the Kappa and a, a few other discoveries aside. But first, I just want to, before we move on to the rest of the chapter, because there's a little bit in between and during and after, but I just want to talk about his design. I didn't expect to like it as much as I do. I really enjoy this uh, character design, and apparently, like, he's very versed in sumo wrestling. He's very, he's the sumo member of the Nine Red Chiefs, or the Nine Red Scabbards, and he is an incredible, like, the design on this guy looks really good, and I was kind of humming and hawing whether, okay, is Kawamatsu a woman or a man? But I'm assuming from all the dialogue, I didn't see anybody say, oh, we didn't know Kawamatsu was a woman uh, in the comment sections. So I'm going to go on the limb and keep using the pronoun uh, he. And he looks badass. Like, I am I am on board with this. Like, clearly he's got some type of devil fruit and all that stuff. But right off the bat, I'm, I'm liking the long hair. I'm liking the fact that he's got his blades and he's still a samurai and he's got the, you know, the hat and the whole bit. I am I am on board with this Kawamatsu person, and by all intents and purposes, he should be just as strong as Shutemaro, who was able to speed blitz one of the three calamities of Kaido. So, this dude is no slouch. I am I am seriously I'm seriously sweating, but I'm seriously looking forward to seeing more of this guy, and I and I'm hoping we do see more of him. And I want a confrontation with this guy. I want to see him go toe to toe with someone because. I like the design. Kawamatsu has won me over with his first first major actual appearance in the chapter alone. Now, as I said, I really like the design, but right before then, we need to lead up to said reveal and said design because basically the head jailer says, oh, well, that voice is coming from the cell. He was supposed to be executed 13 years ago. We're supposed to feed him uh, poisonous fish from the river, but he seems to have survived somehow. And then what do we do? What do we do here? They send in gifters or pleasures or whoever the hell they send in. And it's like, you really think so? And Raizo shows up and Raizo's like, your sword, Kawamatsu. And he gets his sword back and he's like, Tch. like, you fools, do you like sumo wrestling? Tch. You know, and he does the whole thing. It's awesome. It's a wonderful intro for the character. And it's really badass. I'm really enjoying this. Now, uh, the rest of the chapter, the rest of the chapter. I think we need to talk a little bit about this whole, the dialogue of Hirogoro of the Flowers. And I'm going to actually go on my phone and read it verbatim from uh, one of the translations because it is so good and I don't want to butcher it. I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like paraphrase. I don't want to paraphrase this speech because I think it's wonderful. So just once again, guys, it is really hot out here. So I'm, t I'm taking multiple breaks. All right, so basically what happens is they all get together, right? They all get together, 
and uh, Hero Girl of the Flower shows up, Okiku shows up, Raizo's there, Kawamatsu, and of course Luffy Taro. And everyone forgets Chopper. That's the funny thing at the end of the chapter. Everyone's looking at all these others, like strong characters. And Chopper went into, you know, into his hybrid form. He went into uh, his full human form or whatever. And nobody's noticing him. Nobody, nobody seems to care. So that's a classic Chopper thing to have happen. But here, here's what we get. I, I, I wanted to read out. I wanted to read out the speech because once everybody shows up. Once everybody gets in the circle and everything, basically what happens here is Kyorgo the flower shows up and he says to Kiko and Ryza, it's like, reveal your identities, friends. Men whose spirits have been broken, warriors beaten into submission, cannot be heartened from behind a disguise. We must first win their trust. After all, we've been not but ghosts for 20 years. And Hyorogor doesn't say the whole speech. It's, it's imparted onto some of the other characters at the end. But that, that is, that is, I love that speech. I don't know why nobody is talking about this speech. This speech, this speech is golden because, like, I mean, you look at them. I'm looking at it right now. And you're looking at the combination panel, the, the widespread of, Kiku, she puts on this like Oni mask, right? She puts on the Oni mask, and she, you know she got the horns in the whole bit. You see Rizo, like yes, indeed. I mean, I'm ready to be the 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 ninja that rivals the Oni Wabang group, which is once again Oni Wabang group is based on something Ryuuro and Kenshin did it. Multiple mangas do this. This was something in the major Restoration era. They were the ninjas at the time. They're the most historically at least the most historically famous of all the ninjas. So that's a huge thing. And then here, like, I'm just looking at it right now, and we're seeing, we're seeing all this greatness. And everyone's recognizing them, right? Everybody is recognizing them as the people, as the people who they recognize Raizo. And once Kiku put on the mask, they recognize her or... Should I say him? Because we found that out, and King of Lightning will be so impressed. As as I said before, I was not totally convinced that she was a woman. I felt like there was something else going on with that. Uh, I still don't prescribe to the whole crocodiles a woman theory, but I definitely prescribe to the whole Kiku is actually a man theory. I was on board with that, and uh, yeah. So I, I probably didn't make that clear in a lot of reviews, but I remember initially uh, the first couple times we first saw. Her, I, I, or him, I definitely brought it up as a possibility. Now, so Okiku, the, the, the giant woman, is actually a man, revealed to Chopper, so now we actually know that confirmation, as I said before, King of Lightning will be ecstatic, can't wait to watch his live reaction when that uh, drops. So, but the rest of it, the rest of it, like the whole disguises thing, like because some people are not understanding, they put on a mask, they put on a face pretty much. And it's a very, it's a complicated issue. It's one of those things similar to The Dark Knight, where his, his real face, the Dark Knight trilogy, his real face is not that of Bruce Wayne, multi-billionaire playboy. His real face is the Bat. He is Batman. That is who he is. And here, as we saw, you, we no longer have to hide ourselves. We can stand strong as the people we once were. That's the way I took it. It's that... You're hiding behind a mask, but the mask is your true self, right? I took that uh, verbatim, and I and I went and I rolled with it because this whole chapter seems to be based on that. And Hero Girl of the Flowers is sitting there like, I got a sword now. I'm about to wreck some shit. You know, Kiku puts on the mask. Oh, Kiku puts on the mask. She's ready or he's ready. That's going to take a while to get used to, but they're ready to wreck some shit. We see Raizo, Lutar, the whole bit, Kawamatsu, and it's like, these are the people, these are the symbols of 20 years ago. They need to be that persona again. Okiku can't live as Okiku anymore. She needs, he needs to live as the warrior he was 20 years ago. Same with Kawamatsu, after 13 long years, blah, blah, blah. So that means it took seven years for them to capture him. Remember that, because that was a big thing. He's been captured for 13. They've been gone for 20. Kawamatsu managed to evade, uh, avoid escape and, and evade 
Kaido and Orochi's forces for a number of years, uh, raising Kiori and all that stuff until he was finally captured. So there's that. And then we have Raizo, who has proven himself a couple of times before as well. Now, that's basically the end of the chapter and the end of the review, guys. What did you all think, though? Because I feel like this chapter, now we're hiatus next week. The worst thing about this chapter is hiatus next week. Now, I will admit when I'm wrong, I was very wrong about Luffy being able to just take down Udon Prison without any issues. I did not expect the prisoners to become one. And, of course, he doesn't want to, you know, boom, boom, boom the prisoners, right? Of course he doesn't. He's Luffy. He doesn't want to do that. They're innocent people to him. So, yeah, I just, I, I didn't see that coming, but I like it. I still like the turn of events. I'm excited to see what happens in 949. Uh, Oda can take as many breaks as he want because regardless of what uh, the supposed fan base, how can you call yourself a fan if you're not loving this, uh, regardless of what you guys are saying, uh, I'm loving it. I, I still am so happy with Wano. I mean, I had my lulls. I thought oversaturation for a while. And I still hold to the fact that Wano does seem to be the combination of 20 years worth of work coming in a little too hot. But it seems to have paced itself out properly. And now we're into a true, really good arc. So I'm looking forward to that, ladies and gentlemen. What do you guys all think of the chapter? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please like, subscribe, and comment. As always, it's always very much appreciated. This has been Griever with your Behind the Lawn Reviews. And we will see you back here next time, guys. Drink responsibly as I am, as you can clearly tell. And we'll see you next time.